I have been a guide leader for over 60 years, mainly because I enjoy working with the girls. <clears throat> uh, my other background, I was a school teacher before I got married. And since then I've done odd bits of teaching, but largely um, stayed home to bring up my children and to help in the community. So as a guide leader, <clears throat> one of the uh, integral parts of guiding is service. And back in 1991, we were looking for service that wasn't just nominal. We were looking for something with commitment and <clears throat> tossing ideas around. And at that time, food banks were just beginning. And one of the assistant leaders said, why don't we grow vegetables for the food bank? Because we could do that if we had some land. Speak up a bit, please. We can Sorry. only just hear you. Could you just speak up, uh, Cynthia? Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, food banks were just beginning. And um, it was suggested by one of the assistant leaders that maybe we could grow vegetables for the food bank. Um, to grow vegetables, you need land. Anyway, we put it to the guides who were guides at that time, and they thought it was a brilliant idea and were committed. And we went to the local vicar of the church where we meet in Epsom and asked him, was there any part of the vicarage garden, which was huge, that we could use to grow vegetables? And he gave us three square metres, which had been his rubbish tip. And... So the garden began back in October 1991. With the changes of vicars over the years, many of whom didn't like gardening, our garden gradually increased until we got to about uh, 60 square metres today. And so, Lee, can we have the first photograph, please? Sure. I'm going to share uh, my screen. So let me do that. Uh, can everybody see that? Okay, do you want to see this? Yes. yes. Do you want to see this? Yes, this is part and, of the uh, garden. You mentioned it yesterday. And huh? with girls you working mentioned. in it and planting and they're picking beans and silver beet and planting other things. Second photograph, please. This is another section of the garden. And later I will mention the trellis, which you can see, and where we got the trellis from. Thank you. Oh, not that one, sorry. Uh -huh. In a minute, in a minute. Oh, okay. Okay, no, we can jump ahead if you like, because I was going to talk about the vegetables we grow. And the vegetables we grow are those that are easy to grow, like silver beet, um, spring onions, leeks, uh, in the summer, cucumber, courgette, beans, lettuce, radish, beetroot, carrots, potatoes. We also grow Maori potatoes, tutakai riri, celery, pumpkins. You name it, we grow it, or we try to. The only thing we don't really grow are things like tomatoes that require spraying. And up until three years ago, we used to grow cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. But three years ago, club root attacked, and this is the result, which is the next photograph. Oh. That is a broccoli with club root. The club root is a virus that attacks the root, and it stunts the growth. And as you can see at the top of the picture, the broccoli are not even worth looking at. And unfortunately, there's no cure. Consequently, over the last year or two, we have diversified with things like onions and broad beans and parsnip. The garden has always had compost bins, um, as, but not enough was ever produced from the weeds that we grew. And so we've bought compost in over the years. Com the garden's what I call organic in the sense that we use no chemical sprays. And the guides couldn't afford sprays anyway, because they're very expensive. Also, if you read Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, you'd never use chemical sprays ever. For controlling slugs and snails, 
we made beer traps. Looked good on the guide accounts buying beer, but never mind. <laughs> um, but nothing quite like drowning in your favorite tipple if you're a slug or a snail. We used fertilizers, the usual standard NPK, nitrogen, potassium, and I've forgotten the other one, uh, lime and animal manure. We made mini cloches to protect our seedlings and we made them out of lemon bottles, lemonade bottles. Cut off the top and the bottom and put it around your seedling until it's established. We grew companion plants, feverfew and calendula, which is a type of marigold. And we grew flowers and herbs such as gladioli, fennel, parsley and comfrey to attract the bees. The guides worked on a roster system, three or four of them spending one hour per week. This meant them doing one hour about a week, twice a term, which wasn't really a big ask, but it did involve commitment. During the 30 years, over 200 guides have been involved in the garden. So remembering that they're only a member of the unit for on average about three years, uh, over, no, over 90 of them have done more than 20 hours gardening in that time. One thing that's changed in this time is that the age group has changed. When the garden started, the guides were 10 to 14 years old. By 2015, the age had been reduced to nine to 12 and a half. This has had implications in the garden because the girls are not strong enough to do a lot of digging and other heavy work, which landed up on the poor old leader that was me. But working with guides is challenging and fun. You never know what's going to happen next. They scream at a bug or a worm or They'll rescue the bug when I'm going to squash it and take it away somewhere. I tell them to take it far enough that it can't come back. <laughs> they have put beetroot in the compost bin and sent the leaves to the mission, <laughs> except I rescued it just in time. They either hate getting soil or dirt on their hands, or they make mud pies and have mud fights. <laughs> Following instructions from a leader to get something is a challenge for the poor old leader. How many ways can you describe a trowel before you actually get a trowel? And there've been other problems too. There was an itinerant bunny with a liking for lettuces. And one of the vicar's dogs learned how to dig up potatoes and eat them raw. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that resulted in a very quick a trip to the shop to get a roll of wire netting to keep the dog out. We've grown swan plants over the years too, um, which has been educational. I thought every child knew about monarch butterflies, but no, many of them have never seen caterpillars or chrysalises or butterflies hatching. One year we had about 70 something chrysalises along the top of that trellis you saw in the first photograph. And so now we've got a couple of, next, next photo, please. <laughs> it's guides with some of the produce that we've picked over the years. One year the cucumber turned curly, so they thought they made good telephones. <laughs> next photograph. <coughs> <coughs> Another barrel load of goodies for the mission. And there you can see the main garden with the potatoes flowering in the background. And in the days when we could still grow brassicas. The next photograph. That was a week's pickings for the mission. Gee. Um, as you can see, they loved us to pieces. This particular time was the only time we grew tomatoes. We grew cherry tomatoes and we had moderate success with them, but we never ever tried to grow proper tomatoes. And now the next photograph. Here you can see girls washing the potatoes that we dug up and they've got more mud on their faces than they've got on the potatoes. 
and the next one, digging potatoes. And as you can see, they really enjoyed doing it. The guide unit has won two awards for their efforts. In 1993, the Cavell Guides won the Olav Award. This award is given by the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, which has guides in 150 countries and over 10 million members. It's named to honor the memory of the world chief guide, the late Lady Lowell of Baden-Powell. It's given annually to a group within guiding anywhere in the world for meeting the needs of a country by sustained effort. And this is the only time New Zealand has won the award because it usually goes to third world countries where it's much easier to make a difference. In 1998, the guide unit won the Commonwealth Youth Service Award, which brought with it a thousand pounds, which converted to about $3,000. This enabled the guides to build a garden shed to keep our tools in, and also the trellis, which you saw in the first photograph on which we grow beans and blackberry. And we have a next photo, please, Lee. There's the garden shed. And one of the guys up on top cleaning off all the debris that was going blocking the gutters. We have the garden shed, and you can just see it on the left hand side of the photograph connected up to a water tank, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a great boon in the hot, dry summers we have, in that we have a tank full of water that we can use for washing vegetables and watering seedlings. The guides entered the Easter show once in some category, uh, but we didn't win. We were told we were too professional. <laughs> <laughs> I often think that the publicity that resulted from winning these awards, because we were on television, we were in the newspapers and so on, has resulted in the establishment of many community and school gardens. Because up until that time in the early 90s, um, it didn't happen very much at all. Whereas now I think you'll find nearly every school has a school garden and the children grow vegetables. So over the years, this has all been made possible by generous donors. Turner's Garden Centre, which no longer exists, used to give us their unsaleable seedlings. And believe you me, we managed to make a lot of them survive. Mm -hmm. Living Earth used to give us discounted compost by the trailer load until they went wholesale and then they wouldn't have anything to do with us. Uh -huh. A guy called Peter was unemployed and so he used to grow seedlings for us to keep busy. Once he went back to work, that source of seedlings dried up. St Andrew's Church in Epsom have been fantastic. They have paid for water for irrigation through the summer. They gave us a compost bin and of course, the land to use. The Epsom Rotary Club has supported us because they paid for the irrigation system which has been installed. And last year gave a $500 donation to cover the costs of seeds and fertilizer. And the Randerson family who gave us that water tank you can see. So without all these supporters, it wouldn't have been possible because the guides just wouldn't have had the money to do the things. And we're very grateful. So in conclusion, we've been a regular supplier of fresh vegetables to the Auckland City Mission for over 30 years. Many guides have started their own gardens at home. And the church has had not, hasn't had to worry about a quarter of their Okay. Vicarage Garden because we've looked after it. Okay. Yeah. We have planted two mandarin trees and a lemon, which are now bearing. And we have done many, many things to help make it a better place. I, the garden, the last photo, Lee, I think. This is the last photo taken of the guides, I think, in January this year with. This, that week's crop. And the guides have stopped doing the garden as of February. 
The reasons for this are largely because I've run out of steam. Um, but fortunately, St Andrew's Church have a gentleman who is carrying it on and the vegetables are still going each week to the city mission. It's a great thing to look back on. I think we achieved a lot. And I just wish St Andrew's every success in carrying it on into the future. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I have a vegetable garden, big, and I save all the seeds from it. And I've got masses of beans and purple beans and whatever, which, so it's St Andrew's Church is whereabouts? Is it in the drive in Epsom? No, it's in St Andrew's Road, surprisingly. Oh, I know. And so there's a big driveway that goes up the side to, a, to yes. some buildings, aren't there? Yes, the hall is down in the back there. Yes, I know where it is. I've been to a couple of things there. Um, yes. So if I wanted to donate some seeds, because I look at them and I think, what a shame, I need yes. to give them to someone. Oh, yes, the church would be delighted to have them. Um, you could probably drop them into the office there, which is in one of the buildings down the end of the Oh, building. I know. It faces down the driveway, doesn't yes. it? Um, yes. And there's usually someone there between 9.30 and 12.30, I think. Mm. Well, you've done such a wonderful job. I mean, how challenging and how satisfying and passing that information on to those girls, the, beside the fact that there was vegetables for the city mission. Yes. Um, you know, was, you look back and you must feel so good in your heart because it's there's nothing better than growing vegetables and flowers. Yes, I've, I got agree. 20, I've got 28 fruit trees on the front of my property and I live on the Ellerslie Pam Newer Highway. And when I first came here, there was nothing and I did succession planting, so everything comes on. I very rarely buy fruit. The only thing I have to buy is bananas. Yes. <laughs> wow. Fabulous. Wow. Um, and that's thank, why I stay at home. <laughs> thank you for that. Yes, over the years, we did save seeds. Um, we always let at least one lettuce go to seeds so that it scattered its seeds. And we've got a great crop of curly-leaved lettuces at the moment that are all self-sown. And we just move them around so that they've got space to grow. Quite amazing, because that's one thing that doesn't grow in my garden. I cannot grow lettuces. Oh, amazing. Everything else flourishes, yes. celery seeds down and just messes. I mean, I've even got celery plants that I could dig up and take them over because celery is so easy to grow. Yes. It seeds celery. down. Once you let one seed down, and, yes. and or carrot seed down, I mean, I've got a carrots growing just everywhere because it's seeded down and I mean yeah. I haven't got the heart I was, certainly wasn't going to pull them out. The same thing happened with our parsley in the garden. <laughs> We've got parsley plants everywhere. <laughs> but we let them grow. Absolutely and what a bonus because I think yes. things that seed down themselves yes. do far better than when you actually grow them from yes. seed. Well this year we've had a, a fennel plant that self seeds itself. Yes. And it grew to be well, taller than me, about two metres, well, I don't know. And um, we've harvested the seeds and given them to one of our ladies at church who is selling them at the church fair when the fair comes. She's packaged them all up and cleaned them. And so there's all sorts of things. I mentioned the blackberries. The blackberry fruit is given to the church and they make something out of it and sell it at the church fair. Wonderful. Because they don't keep well enough to send to the mission. They get scared. No, no. Well, I find that if anything goes to seed, I just go through my yes. garden and shake it out, and then everything just grows and comes up by itself. So I have very minimal work to do, really, because I have got a big property. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, well done. All I can say is well done. All your time and effort is just amazing. Wow. People Very don't well. realise... Oh, very well done, yes. Thank you. Uh, we, we benefit from that um, by, uh, I deliver food, um, parcels, and we get the, um, some of the fresh food from the city mission for that purpose. So thank you very much, all those years of work.
Thank you. The education you're giving your girls must be fantastic because there's a generations coming through who think that you know vegetables only come from the supermarket nothing yeah. to do with the ground or soil or anything like that you know they yeah. just think they're in the supermarket and that's it you know well even one potato is so easy to grow in a bucket and yes. you know all these people say that all this food is costing us so much but hold on you can grow two beans in a bucket or a yeah. tub all you need is a little piece of ground and a bit of love and care and things will grow yes going back to your comment brian um i said to one guide one day watch where you're walking the potatoes are just coming up <laughs> and they were about an inch high and she says oh do potatoes have tops <laughs> yes yeah yeah <laughs> which <laughs> illustrates your point entirely brian that yeah yes, 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 yes. You just don't know anything <laughs> and sometimes i would say to them when we picked something, um, they say, what do I do with it now? And I said, well, haven't you seen them in the supermarket? Do you not see that they don't have their roots or their leaves or whatever? And they say, no, they've never been to the supermarket shopping with mum. Wow. Which is sad. Very sad. Alison, you're muted. Sorry? Um, we can't hear you, Alison, just unmute. Down at the bottom. Bottom right hand. Bottom left. Bottom left. Too many people. You're on mute. Um, left. Is that better? There you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. Talking of having too much, we have a grapefruit tree that's dropping their fruit. Um, we're going to take some to the um, Salvation Army, but if anybody wants grapefruit, <laughs> probably are too old and say they can't have it so we've got grapefruit here that's going to waste if anybody wants some let me know there's been an yes, interview in the local paper about people coming and getting them off your tree and packaging to send down the south island yeah i you don't can't put, i don't know who it is because um but they've been advertising in the local paper for surplus lemons and grapefruit to oh. send down Send on oh. the South Island. Yeah. What, what paper was that, Julie? Yeah, what paper it was must that? have been in the Courier somewhere that I saw it, or I may have seen it on Facebook, but it could well, it's probably in the local paper. And oh, we'll have a look next time if one comes. Yeah, and I should have actually cut it out. I mean, they're, they're the sort of things. I mean, I've got a grapefruit tree that's laden, but I feed them to the wax eyes at my place. I know that uh -huh. sounds terrible, but I cut them in half, and these thousands of wax eyes arrive, and they just find oh, them please. delightful. I've got nails in the fence that I put them up on. Oh, lovely. Can I, can I just say something, please? Uh, lions and Rotary Clubs. I think have been advertising for citrus fruit oh. to send you on the line. So yep. any of the Lions clubs or any of the Rotary clubs can probably put you onto the appropriate oh. uh, club. Yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. We're, we're they, gonna... they, they stopped doing that a few years back because mm -hmm. at one time they had so much citrus fruit, it filled <laughs> two containers. They took them to the South Island and they just couldn't give them away. No. Um, so a few years back, they stopped doing it and they've started again now. So it's good that they're starting it again, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I think we're talking about the next generation and now yes. getting, re resurrecting it. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. We, we put a, a basket of, a, a, an old um, basket with, with fruit on out the front and the label saying free grapefruit. But they didn't all go, which I'm a bit surprised. Mm. Some have, but not a lot. Yeah, but a lot of these people who need those don't have transport, so they don't see it or don't have access to no. pick it up. No. Yeah. Well, I put my surplus lemons and limes down on my fence on the main road here, and they go within an hour, and I just keep replenishing them. I only put about 10 out at a time, and people just... I look down and they've all gone. Um, oh, God. We live in a, in a dead end street, so we don't have a lot of traffic. No, no. no. So we do the same. We put ours out on the front wall here. And, you know, we put about uh, half a dozen at a time and they just vanish. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
But what about years. what about the what about the food banks? Uh, do they have a demand for citrus fruit? Um, well, I'm not sure about that. Not sure. I think so. We've taken them to the Salvation Army, mm. and they're going to take some when when the weather stops and we can get out and pick them. But um, yeah. yeah. I think all the thing would be to ask a food bank. All Saints Church, you've got a big food bank at the back there. If you go down to that one and ask them. Whereabouts? All Saints in Howick. Yeah. Right oh. there. There's a big food bank down the back of there. Um, you know, silly things that we give them are empty egg cartons. Yeah. You know, little, half a dozen ones because they put them oh, out in the food boxes. You know, they get given eggs like a big tray of 36 and um, they want the little egg cartons just to distribute their eggs, you know. Oh. Yeah, there's lots of little things oh. that they take down oh. there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Things with the mandarins. No. Um, mm. Pen goods and peanut butter. Yeah. The thing about um, grapefruit is that there's usually only one person in a family who likes eating it for breakfast and so you can only get through a very small amount but people don't seem to use it to make um jams no. with because the cost of buying the sugar and things yes. like that yeah, yeah also, the no, they don't know how a lot of these people with the need um if they have heart issues they cannot yes. take it's grapefruit right. it's yeah. right. be careful with the grapefruit yeah yeah mm -hmm. Some of the pills, there's a big warning on it. Yeah. Please do not eat grapefruit. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah. We like that too. We can't, we don't use it. They're falling off the tree. Yeah. It's a shame that they don't get used. Well, cut them in half and put them down, and the wax eyes will arrive in thousands. Oh, all right. I'll try that. They just love them. You just cut them in half, and all of a sudden you look out and they can eat. One whole one within about two hours. Wow. They come in droves. So you put them on the ground? Well, I put them on. I, I've got a big fence between me and the motel next door, and I put oh. nails along the, the, the uh, board and nailed them in, and I just stick them on top of there, and they just love them. Oh, mm. we oh yes, we have got a wooden fence. We can try that. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, excuse the birds that arrive. Just um, excuse my ignorance, but the South Island are they just short of citrus fruit because of the climate? They don't yes. grow. Yeah. They don't grow in the they South can't Island. grow them down there. Too cold. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Hmm. They can grow the really nice things like peony flowers and that. Yeah. Can't grow them here in Auckland because we don't get the cold enough. That's right. So right. there's those yeah. two different climates of like two different countries, really, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. That's why you see so much citrus fruit growing up in <laughs> North Auckland, especially mm, yeah. around Bob Islands and Kerry Kerry areas. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Never this. never mind. Uh, climate change, we'll sort that out and they'll be good <laughs> <laughs> before we know it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, are there any Can other I... questions for Cynthia? Yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just so yeah. wonderful. Barbara, Thank you. Time. Barbara? Um, a totally different question, because I actually attend All Saints. They've got enormous grounds there, but I would suspect that if anybody suggested growing vegetables, you would get the naysayers coming along saying, oh, but someone will come and steal them. Yes, so have you had that sort of comment? Or has anyone else met that, that sort of comment? No, and we've never had vegetables stolen. Wow. Right. We yeah, have. You're down a long right of way, though, aren't you? Pardon? Yes, we're aren't down a right away. Yeah. And yeah. Right down yeah. the back. Um, so it's not yes. obvious from the street. Um, we get a lot of foot traffic through the grounds, through the cemetery and out the other side. So yeah. I suspect that um, they would disappear, but it's a shame that people have to use that attitude. It is a great shame. Mm. Even if they are stolen, they're obviously going to someone. Well, they need it, they yes. Need it. Hmm. yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, we, we've got a young woman at our church um, and she's desperate to grow a garden to help our food bank out. But she, um, she's she been given the land, but the, the priest said she could use the garden to grow things in, but she doesn't seem to know much about gardening. Is there well, any sort of um, yeah. easy book that you can recommend? Or <laughs> If she goes on the internet, it'll tell you how to start a garden. Oh, of course, that's right. Yeah. Just Google that's probably what she's planning. New to gardening or starting a garden. I mean, if she just starts small, yes, mm, yes. just little, and well, get I some results, lucky. then she just learns from that. Uh huh. I mean, we all grew up with our parents growing vegetables, didn't we? Yes, yes. and we all learned. I was just going to say that my father was a gardener, and that's where I learned. But once I left home, Yates's Garden Guide, and I don't know whether it's still available, but yep. that answered most of my questions because it was before the internet. Yeah. 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 My grandfather taught me to grow um, radishes yeah. and strawberries. <laughs> you say about stealing food, we had a big lemon tree at the front of our property here, and it used every other year it used to be full of lemons. And there was a couple outside standing, and I gave them a couple of lemons, and they said, thank you. I said, well, when you come by, just help yourself. Oh. Well, the next few days, the whole family came in, and they stripped the tree. Uh -huh. And they probably took them took and them sold them in their dairy. They probably took them to the markets and sold them. Yeah, they <laughs> took them in their dairy and sold them. Oh, gosh. Yes, you never say come and help yourself. You no, would say if you on. need, if you'd like some, please come and knock at my door and I'll pick them off because I cut them off. So yeah. please don't come and touch them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm. wow. Not good. All right. no. Well, I just think that's such a lovely talk. Thank you, Lee, for organizing that. That's superb. No, a pleasure, Julie. And I know it's your first time joining us on one of these talks and um, yeah, no, it's um, it's always something different and interesting, uh, fascinating. Um, so Cynthia, Cynthia, again, thank you, and um, wishing you all the best, and really hope that the the garden continues over the years. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Well done for setting the foundation. Hopefully, it just blooms from there. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Because the, the need at the city mission is greater than ever it was. Of course. Mm. Yes. Uh, you may have guessed that we belong to Lions, mm -hmm. and it's my job to find guest speakers. Could could I ask you to <laughs> think about being a guest speaker for us? Um, we don't can't pay, but but we always um, um, uh, pay for. Uh, we feed them. We yes, we feed we feed the guest speakers and their partner. Lions. Yes, I don't mind going around and talk. I've talked to a lot of garden clubs over the years too. Oh, about... that would be lovely if we can get your details yeah. afterwards. Yes, yes, thank you. I'll send them on to you. Cynthia, just one question. Did you have you ever visited City Mission to see them, to see your vegetables where they're did you ever do that? Yes, I, in the early days, several times I've taken the guides in to see what went into a family pack for a week. Um, haven't done it the last few years because things got too difficult with COVID and all that other stuff. Of course. Yeah. Yes, yes, because that up, to see them. COVID, of course, meant that we had months on end where the guides weren't allowed to come. Yes. Mm. So um, it meant I did it and I had a, a neighbour across the road who used to come over and help. But, you know, it gets hard when you have to do it all on your own. Of course. Mm. Yeah, because for the kids to see the end result of the, yes. the work is mm. yes, rewarding we have, too. Mm. We have taken them. And the city mission, I know, whoever was in charge of the food bank used to talk to them. Oh, great. Well, that's the wrap for this morning. Thank you, Cynthia, again. And um, you. I'll pass your details on to Claire and Chris, if that's all right with you. And. Yes. Uh, Yes. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Lynn. No problem. Have a lovely week, everybody. See Thank some you. of you tomorrow. Yeah.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. Hello. <laughs>